guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, what we're talking about is breaks, modern breakbeat tunes. Breakbeat's been making a bit of a resurgence and it's kind of quite universal across a bunch of different genres from like minimal, house, progressive, loads of stuff really. Some artists that come to mind are people like Richie Blacker, Braxton, Tommy Farrow, Frankie Wah, and labels like Stress Records and Juna Deep of Unsound Mind and a whole bunch really. So I'm just sat here editing this and I realized that I forgot to mention bicep. So the reason why that deserves an interruption is because the music that these guys have been doing in the last couple of years pretty much single-handedly was the catalyst for this whole modern breakbeat movement. Anyway, let's go back to the video, eh? As always, there's a link in the description to my Patreon if you want to go and grab the project files for this. Patreon's one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure that I keep doing these videos. There's so much content on there now, it's really crazy. There's just, uh, just get over there and check out the back catalogue. Anyway, let's jump into Ableton and make some breakbeats. Alright, so here we are inside Ableton and this is the project that I put together for this kind of modern breaks type thing. As I said at the beginning, quite a few sub-genres are kind of involved in the breaks resurgence. So I've just kind of taken an amalgamation of different ideas that I saw. So it's not exactly following something on Anjuna Deep or Stress or whatever, but it definitely heads in the right vibe of what I've been seeing. So we're at 125 BPM and the tempos of the tracks that I referenced kind of ranged between about 123 up to 132. So it's quite broad. Uh, what I will say is that if the BPM is as slow as 123, I feel like it's a bit slow. It just starts to really feel like, it starts to really feel like an electronica downbeat kind of track. Something from like 125 to 130 is about what I would write when I'm making anything kind of breakbeat. Normally at this point I'd do a playthrough, but I'm gonna try saving that till the end just to get straight into the tutorial. So no messing about. Let's just jump in and have a look at the kick. So I've got two kicks in a group here. The first one, is just a 909, and that sounds like this. So this is the pattern, and this is like a pretty standard pattern of what I saw. A lot of the tracks I referenced literally just had this pattern. So on the downbeat, and then on the third offbeat. I felt like putting this one here just added a bit more groove and a bit more pace. Then I've got a layer to this. Just a bit more splashy, a bit brighter to help accentuate that in the groove. And on this top kick, I've actually added one more note. So just a little bit lower velocity, this note here on the 16th. It just helps to give a little bit of groove. So it's just adding a little bit of variation, helping with the kind of rhythm of the track. But now because I'm using this top kick, I've added a bit of saturation, which I'm using the soft clipping. I've got this drive up to 15 dB and I've pulled down the output to 15, minus 15. And if you look at this meter here when I play it, you'll see that it's going above this faint line. Because I've got the soft clipping turned on, that means it's literally just chopping the transient off. Because we've got just quite a sharp transient from these kicks doubled up, this will stop the limiter on the, on the master peaking and it allows the kick to have a bit more sub. Because of the volume that's being chopped off here, I'm just using this utility to mono the signal and then pump up the gain by 3 dB. Now let's have a look at the claps and snares. So I've got this main clap snare group here, which is just a couple of samples layered together. This one's from a breakbeat loop. You can hear it's quite dirty, it's uh, got some hats and stuff in there, but it's the exact vibe that we're going for. I've added on this hybrid reverb, and then I've actually got another reverb on this group, which is just this Slate Digital Verb Suite Classic. So let me turn that off, and then turn this off. So just making it feel a bit bigger and it helps it to kind of sit in the track nicely. I've got this other layer underneath it. Oh, sorry, this is the pattern here. So we're just going on every second downbeat, standard claps uh, position. And then I've got a couple of kind of groove hits here. And if I zoom in to the MIDI, you can see I've pulled these notes off the grid a bit. And that is because this sample has a bit of a kind of pre-clap thing going on. So if I just had them dead on, it's going to be playing that, which means that the actual clap sound 
it's going to be late. So this way it just kind of lines this up with the grid. But because I've done it by hand, it means that each one is a bit different. So it feels a bit more live, humanized. Uh, let's take a look at this second layer. It's quite a long reverby kind of snare. And I've got a pattern here that's playing one long and one short hit. Now this works. This works because I've got the sustain turned up and a bit of release there. So because of the sustain, when I have that longer MIDI note, it's playing the full sample all the way along here. And when I have the short one, it just plays the start. You can see on the playhead. So together, those snares. The layers are just helping to make it sound a bit more interesting and just really help with the groove as well. Having that long, then short, long, then short and having those extra kind of groove hits just all helps add some kind of rhythm and groove to the track. The processing on these snares is a bit of bit reduction. So the breakbeat thing is like a bit of a throwback to early rave, early jungle and then the breakbeat scene from the late 90s, early 2000s. During that era, People were predominantly producing with hardware. Units like the SP1200 or the MPC60, MPC2000, they weren't very high fidelity. So the bit crushing helps to give it this kind of authentic bit reduction kind of feel. It's subtle without the reverb. just giving it a bit more of a like white noisy bit crushed sound and it helps to glue those two sounds together a bit. I'm then using the compressor just to kind of again glue them together and help to tame those snares, then the reverb. So together with the kick, and we've just got this snare fill, it's got a MIDI pattern like this. And that snare is coming from a break loop and it works in the groove like this. Then I've got a snare roll which is being used in the build up. And that's a 909 snare. And that's being sent to some reverb, which is just part of my template. I'll link up a video here where you can check out the full rundown of my template. You can download it over on Patreon, so go grab that. It's a good starting point for your tracks. But basically I've got a series of reverbs, delays and things that I use in every track. It's all set up, ready to go every time I start Ableton Live. So let's take a look at the hats. Uh, the first thing I will show you is this tambourine loop, which comes from a very famous drum break called the Truth Break. And I downloaded this from a website called Sample Focus, where people can upload their own samples to share. It's a pretty good resource, so I suggest you go and check it out. But basically what they've done is taken the original break, isolated a bunch of the tambourine sounds, and then sequenced it into a loop that works. Now I've got this as the main breakbeat. This is just something I downloaded off Splice. I'm not sure if it's been programmed or if it's been based on one of the famous drum breaks, but it sounds pretty cool. It sounds like this. Really nice. Uh, all I've done to that is use the transient envelope to just bring in those uh, transients a little bit to just to just kind of shorten the to just shorten the envelope of the loop a bit and make the transients a bit more punchy. So without that, then I'm just cutting out some of the lows. And I've got this LFO tool which is ducking just on the clap because I've got these other two claps. I want to have the essence of this clap here. Uh, the depth is at 40%, so it's not ducking it this far, it's kind of ducking it this far. But let's hear that with the claps. So if I had this without the LFO tool, the claps are just getting a bit loud, a bit out of control for my liking. So this just helps it to all kind of balance in the mix. So together, So 
So you can really hear those uh, kind of offbeat claps and the groove kind of hits that I mentioned before, all starting to work together with that uh, brake loop. Now we've just got a couple of 909 things going on. Standard 909 open hat and a 909 closed hat. This pattern, I just kind of listened along and played what sounded right with the other elements. So I'll isolate those and just play it with the kick. So that closed hat's also being sent to some ping pong reverb, which is playing dotted eighth notes. And that really just helps to kind of make it feel funkier and groovier without it. It gives it a bit more of a shaker vibe and really helps to kind of accentuate some of the hits and then have some kind of ghost hits in the side in these areas where there's not actually a 16th note being played. So all of the drums together sound like this. So all of the drums together sound like this. Super funky. <laughs> now, the bass. So we've got this Reese bass, which I decided to use. This is actually from a project I did where I talked about a bunch of different bass lines from Hotsons 82's tracks. I'll link that up here if you want to go check it out. Uh, the sound, I've just basically taken that and then turned up the sustain on the amplification, adjusted the filter a little bit and added a bit more of the unison. Other than that, it's pretty much the same. So this is the bass I went for and this is the pattern. Pretty simple, we're in the key of A minor, so we're playing G for one bar, A for one bar, and then E for two bars. And that sounds like this. Now up here, you'll see I've got this one called Hard Reese. This is what I started with, and it's a bit more of a kind of drum and bass type of Reese. The synthesis is a bit more in depth. In this one, I've got a sub, then I've got two sawtooth oscillators, each up one octave from the sub. I've got a bit more unison, a bit more glide. Uh, then I've also got a bit more modulation. Let's hear it. So I actually really like this sound, but I felt like it was a little bit hard for the project. So if you download the project from Patreon, it's gonna be in there as well. So you can jump in there and see how that's done. Maybe you prefer that sound. So there's some cool modulation going on with this. So I've got LFO2 here, which is modulating the filter frequency. So you can see this kind of coming open and closed as we play the bass. Making this kind of wub wub sound. So this LFO has an attack on it. So when it first plays, doesn't start with the LFO, it kind of increases in intensity and then starts playing. It's also being affected by LFO1. We can see here that LFO1 is routed to LFO2 rate, this here, right? So what that means is as the note sustains, this LFO gets faster. And this just adds a real level of complexity to the sound and makes it feel much less static and predictable. So let's listen again. So you can hear that rate changing, especially on the held sustained longer note that's going for two bars, the E. Then you can see here, I've got a bit of processing going on. I've got a saturation layer. I've got a chorus layer. And then I've got the dry signal coming through here without any processing. And both those chorus and saturation layers have got the subs being filtered out. Then I've got a compressor. So it's called sidechain, but it's not actually sidechaining. So this compressor is just controlling the volume and evening out the volume of that bass line. And then I've got a sidechain, which is routed to the kick. So that's just ducking it as the kick plays. And the same thing's happening on this other rest. This one shouldn't be called sidechain. Cool. So let's take a look at the melodic elements. The main kind of hook thing here, which is the house piano. 
Now this is following the same sequence as the baseline. It looks complicated, but it's really not that complicated. If I fold this, you can see the notes there. I've got the scale set here to A minor. So what we've got playing here is G major with another G above and below. Then we've got C major, A minor, E minor with a G major, and then the A minor there. So that sounds like this. So this is actually coming from my house piano rack, which I created for this piano house tutorial. Check it out if you want. Um, but you can download this from Patreon. It's all included in the project. It's a multi-sampled instrument with some filtering, delay, reverb, saturation, all built into the, into the rack. So those chords are coming in. They're being affected by this randomization, which is velocity. And that just helps to kind of humanize it a bit. Each note is going to be played at a slightly different velocity, which kind of mimics the feeling of someone playing that on the keyboard. They're not going to hit every single key at the exact same velocity. Now, because we've got such a strong bass, I'm actually cutting out quite a bit of the piano, but I do want those lower layers in there because it adds upper harmonics, which help to make the piano feel a bit more rich and give it some real depth. So if I take this off, Cool. Then I'm just sending that to a big delay to kind of create this fill at this break point here. I'm using the filter here with some automation just to kind of introduce the piano and then bring it out in the break, bring it back, bring it up and down in different sections basically. All right, so up next we've got this 80s sequence. Let's take a look at the MIDI here. It's just kind of playing this arpeggio sequence pattern. So it's kind of playing the same thing with a slight variation on this half of the bar, a slight variation on the timing, and then every second bar, this changes from E to F. So it just kind of keeps things switching up, helps it feel not so repetitive. And because this isn't repeating perfectly on the half bar, it feels like it's kind of moving and evolving. I've got the side chain on that just to duck it to the kick, and then there's a big echo on here, which is just a ping pong eighth notes, quite a bit of feedback, filtering out some of the lows, and it sounds like this. And on this EQ, I'm just cutting out the subs and then using this upper filter just to introduce the sound. I'm sending that to quite a bit of reverb here. So this has actually come from an operator preset. Let me just duplicate this. And then what I'll do is reset this. This is what it sounded like originally. So it's cool. I like the timbre of it. I think there's space in the mix for it, but it doesn't have quite the vibe that I wanted. I want to, So what I've done is messed with the filter a bit, added a bit of drive. I've increased the attack to give it this kind of plucky feel. And then I've added some glide, which gives it that pitch bending between the notes kind of feel. The real kind of 80s vibe, which is why I've called it the 80s sequence. So let's have a listen in context. Really cool vibe. I just, I love what that brings to the track. Now we've got these strings here, which is actually from a live suite expansion pack. So I'll freeze that. Uh, you'll get the MIDI and stuff if you download the project, but I'll freeze it in case you don't have live suite or you don't have the string ensemble installed. But if you do have live suite, this is actually included. It's just an extra download from ableton.com and then you have to install it, but it's free or included in the purchase price. So what I've got here is some pretty crazy looking MIDI, but actually all we're doing, if we look at the bass, we're just following the bass line. Then I've got these chords playing ninths. So this is a major ninth, minor ninth, and then a minor ninth. And I've just added this one on the top. If I turn on the scale here to A minor, you can see actually the this F sharp should have been the note for the major ninth, but I didn't like the way it sounded. Same here. So I've just turned that off 
and put it onto the G. I'm not an expert at this stuff. I just mess around with it, see what sounds good. Maybe someone would say this sounds a bit safe, but I don't know. Everything's in the scale. It's working. Uh, I just kind of duplicated some notes up and down. And then the notes that were consistent between the different chords, I've just extended them along just to kind of make it feel like they glide into each other, make it feel a little less stabby. So that gives it this really lush kind of cinematic feel. Those strings are just being introduced with a bit of volume automation to the break. Let's turn off that sequence so we can hear them. So when I kind of play everything together, you almost don't even notice that they're there, but they're adding so much depth and kind of emotion to the track. Really cool element. Now we've got some vocal bits going on. I've just got this one hit here, one shot here with a big echo and reverb on it. Don't even know what it's saying, but it sounds cool in the track. And importantly, it's in key. Now, I've got this vocal here, which is just a one shot playing the sequence. Uh, let me play it for you. So it's got that kind of cool ravey throwback vibe, but the sound is quite lush and it kind of has space in the track for it, so it fits quite well. So that pattern is being mirrored with some variation in some of the snare patterns in this fill, I believe. I think it's working together anyway. So those work quite well together. So as you could see with the melodic elements, I've got everything kind of working in unison in terms of like the melodic progression. And then I've also got a bunch of elements that are working together in a kind of rhythmic theme. So it creates like a really strong theme for the track. Now I've got one more element here. In the end, I don't think it really worked perfectly with the track. So I probably wouldn't turn this on if I was to finish the track, but it is a really cool element and it definitely fits in the style. Style. So let's have a listen, it's this gated choir sound. You can hear it in the context of the start here. So it really works there, but with the other elements I don't think it's fitting as well. It just feels like it's kind of fighting for space a little bit. But what's happening on this is it's just a sustained part of a sample that's playing like a choir sound. I've got it playing the same melodic sequence as the bass and the chords. I've got a bunch of chorus, reverb, bit reduction to give it that old feel. So this is all getting it wide and crazy. Then we've got this gate. So without the gate, it sounds like this. Now the gate is being triggered by this gate trigger. I've got turned it off, so it's like side chaining the gate. So what happens is the gate pulls it down. And every time one of these hits, it opens the gate and lets through the choir. So if we look at this pattern play, I've also got set the scent to like a really big ping pong reverb, a lot of delay and a bit of like wide saturation. So if I play this together with this stutter vocal, you can hear I've tried to make them work together with this gate pattern. It 
So I don't want everything to be happening exactly on the same pattern or it's just going to sound a bit too robotic and weird. So I'm trying to create these different patterns that have similarities and then differences which help to make them feel like they're interacting. And this is something that you can do with your percussion, with your melodic elements, and it basically works in any genre. So what I might do is turn that off here because I feel like it's not enough space for it. and I'll turn it off there. But it sounds really cool in the intro. Now effects, pretty simple stuff. We've just got a crash on every eight bars on the downbeat. I've got this crash fill at the end of the break. Then I've got this reverse sound, which I've just tuned to fit with the key of the track. That's coming from my sample pack, Underground Shades of House on House of Loop, link up here. Then I've got another little reverse cymbal sound also from Underground Shades of House. So that's just happening every eight bars to lead into this crash. So that wraps up all of the elements. The full project is available for download from my Patreon, along with all of the other projects for these types of videos that I do. There's literally so much content on there, it's crazy. Anyway, let's take a listen through from the start to finish and you can see how all of these elements work together. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a really fun one this week. Let me know in the comments, who's your favorite breakbeat artist at the moment? As I mentioned, go over to Patreon, link in the description, grab the project file so you can take a bit of a deep dive into how everything was put together. If you like these type of videos where I break down the style of different artists and labels, then check out this playlist. You're gonna like it. All right, well, that's it for me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.